This lecture is entitled Thomas Gainsborough, Landscape plus Portrait equals Artistic Success. Now, Thomas Gainsborough, who you see in this self-portrait on the right, which dates to 1759, was actually tra trained as a landscape painter uh, in that distinct genre of landscape painting. But as you may recall, the prim primary and most popular genre of painting in England was portrait painting. So what Gainsborough did was take his training and combine that with the demand for portrait painting, two distinct genres, to come up with a new kind of portrait painting, a kind of portrait painting that was equal parts landscape and portrait. And that might not seem all that innovative to us because you know, we've seen this kind of thing before, but in 18th century England, this was still a pretty new approach to portraiture. And Gainsborough was really, really successful at this, and people really liked his portraits, so he got a lot of commissions, and it was really a winning combination. I think you can see, kind of get a preview of this when we just look at this pretty simple, straightforward self portrait of Gainsborough. We have Gainsborough in the center looking out at us, and there is not necessarily a distinct landscape, but a suggestion of some landscape behind him. And I think you can see there's this foliage that kind of acts as a frame around his head. And there's also an interesting relationship between the sitter himself and the landscape details. And we'll see how Gainsborough uh, makes use of that relationship between sitter and natural background as we take a look at a couple of his most famous works of art. So let's move on now and, and look at one of those. Okay, so here on the left, this large portrait slash landscape, we have Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. And this dates to around 1750. And over here on the right, we have something that's very familiar to us by now. It's Fragonard's The Swing, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But for now, you can kind of put that out of your mind. So let's focus on Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. Well, this was one of Gainsborough's early commissions, and it shows this married couple and their dog, and they're actually fairly newly married in this portrait, and they are sitting on their estate. And Hopefully, you, one of the first things you noticed when you saw this painting was most of the canvas is devoted to landscape. This is a really big canvas, and the portrait portraits of the couple themselves just kind of sits off on the side. So, um, like I said, it's kind of one part landscape, one part portrait, and it's a really interesting combination of the two. Now, the the portrait of the married couple is pretty straightforward. It's nothing over the top. It's a fairly restrained, uh, modest depiction of these two people. They don't, they don't seem to be ostentatious. Um, their dress is not over the top. And certainly the way in which they're depicted is not flamboyant or over the top. And that's part of why I included Fragonard's The Swing over here, because that is certainly an example of an over the top portrayal of a couple, right? We have, it, and it's similar to Mr. and Mrs. Andrews in some ways. It's a couple in a natural landscape, but I think you can see the way Fragonard took that and made it really sumptuous and um, erotic and over the top and how very different Gainsborough's depiction of Mr. and Mrs. Andrews is from that. Um, but not only is the tone of the painting and the depiction of the people different, um, but also the details of this setting are different, right? Um, you know, we have this kind of fantasy world in Fragonard's painting, whereas, as I mentioned, this landscape by Gainsborough is actually the estate of Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. And that actually might bring to mind something else we've looked at um, earlier in this course. So let's take a look now.
So here again is Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, a little bit smaller. And on the right is, hopefully this is familiar to you, uh, Jakob van Reustal's view of Harlem. And I wanted to show you these two images together because they're both really portraits of an actual place, right? Landscapes of real places. Both of these depict real identifiable places. These are not fantasy depictions of some idealized natural state. So that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. And I also wanted to include this comparison simply because during the Baroque, when Roystal painted this image on the right, the English loved Dutch and Flemish painting. They patronized uh, this kind of art. So this is the sort of thing that would have been in the English artistic tradition. So it's not surprising that we see some stylistic similarities, the clouds, the pretty clear, distinct lines, um, so on and so forth. But really, I just wanted to show you this comparison for the sake of the landscape. Um, and of course, we have the portraits inserted in here too. Now, let's move on and take a look at another famous portrait by Gainsborough. And it's really just a lovely, sumptuous, beautiful portrait. And this is it here on the left. And this is Mrs. Richard Brinsley Sheridan. And this dates quite a bit later. It dates to 1787. And this here, um, We'll take a look at it in a minute. Again, this is just for the sake of comparison. So for now, let's just focus on Mrs. Richard Brinsley Sheridan herself. So I think you can see that by later in his career, Gainsborough had a bit more of a luxurious approach to portraits in a landscape setting. And his style, I think you can see, kind of embraces some of those Rococo elements, that really soft quality, the light brush stroke, uh, the sumptuous approach to natural details, but importantly, we still have maintained that kind of serious, modest tone that was very crucial to British portraiture. So we have this modest English woman in this very, uh, very beautiful and sumptuous landscape. So it's an interesting combination of things going on, um, and it's interesting to use sort of incorrect terminology, it's kind of uh, a wonderful combination of portraitiness <laughs> right here in the center with landscapiness and landscapiness kind of borrowed from the Rococo. And what I think is really interesting about this portrait is that the background elements of the landscape seem to kind of fuse together with the woman, the, the sitter in the foreground. Notice, for example, her hair kind of blowing out is just like the foliage in the tree above her. You know, it's as though the tree could be her hair or her hair could be the tree. Um, same thing going on with this sort of translucent shawl around her shoulders, blending in with the clouds in the background. So a really interesting approach to a sitter in nature and the kind of symbiotic relationship of these two figures. So Gainsborough really did some amazingly innovative stuff with his portraits and I think this is really a wonderful example of what he was able to achieve.